Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 141 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. A uh, full midweek show this week. We've got a lot to talk about. First up, uh, Knife Day conversation, as well as Bob's trip to the beach. We'll learn more about another birthday knife. Uh, We're going to, of course, talk about uh, Thursday night knives coming up uh, tomorrow night. A couple of stories in Knife Life News. We're going to talk about uh, Case. And YouTube's Blade Banter that uh, now has a knife of his own, as well as uh, a lot of knife talk on this one. Bob's state of the collection, going to talk about the uh, Bark River uh, Bowie that he got, going to continue the conversation with the attention to detail Mark I, uh, Mark I that he got, uh, three knives that he's got uh, for review from the Pass Around group to talk about. So, uh, hey, Bob, it sounds like a lot of knife talk. Yeah, well, you know, I've been away for a week and uh, didn't have an, an opportunity to, to really blab and bloviate about knives without boring uh, the company. So, uh, so yeah, I saved it up for today. Well, and of course, our uh, fans of Thursday Night Knives know that we did not have a show uh, this past Thursday. That was uh, August th- uh, the uh, 20th. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully that won't be... Uh, a uh, too common of an occurrence, but you know we do have to take vacations every yeah. once in a while. And uh, I know on Thursday, last Thursday, I, I went up to bed about what eleven fifteen, and <laughs> my wife was still up actually watching the one of the the Democratic convention that was that week. And she said, "What are you doing up here so early?" And I said, "Well, no show this week." And she was <laughs> like, "Oh," and I was like, "I know, I miss it so badly. I didn't know what to do with my Thursday night." Yeah, that's right. A Thursday night, uh, strangely, uh, in the middle of a uh, the proceedings down at the beach were all hanging out, and suddenly I just I launched into it. I didn't even know it's ten o'clock. I started <laughs> talking knives. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't really, uh, but I wanted to around the bonfire on the beach. Let's yeah. talk knives. Hey, hey guys, uh, this is all really interesting. But guess what? Bark River <laughs> Knives just came out with a new Bowie. <laughs> oh my God. That uh, broke up the party, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tr- not a bunch of knife junkies there on the beach with you, but uh, but anyway, sympathetic. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, speaking of knife talk, one uh, cool thing that happened this past Monday, this Monday, uh, August 24th, was National Knife Day. Man, I, I know we don't need a reason to celebrate, but uh, National Knife Day, Bob. Yeah, and you know, I hope everyone got the day off. If not, I think you need to lobby to your, you know, the uh, bosses at work. Uh, it's an important day. We have to re- we have to remember how important knives are at least once uh once once a year with a with a work free day and it was monday i think monday is the perfect day not to go to work any day is a great day not to go to work <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, knife day national knife day hope you did have a chance to uh, celebrate uh, uh think about how you use knives even buy yourself a new knife i know uh, bob always has an excuse any excuse to to buy a new knife hopefully you use that same excuse to buy a new knife And I know uh, the good folks over at Knives Ship Free had a great promotion where if you bought a knife over the weekend, you were entered into a drawing for uh, like three different knives. All you had to do was buy a knife and then be entered in a drawing for for one of three awesome knives. Yeah, yeah. Like dream knives, by the way. Like, okay, I'm sorry. I just said like a whole bunch of times. Like I was hanging out with (laughs) a bunch of girls all week. So let me let me start this over. Three different categories of knives. Uh, knife ship free was giving away. So if you bought a fixed blade knife, uh, you got a fix. You got entered in uh, to a contest to win a fixed blade knife, but not just any fixed blade knife. Uh, a Randall Model One, which is possibly the most beautiful fixed blade knife you could ever have. I, I just think they're, I just think they're outstanding and beautiful, and they've been around since World War II, and they've been, uh, you know, imitated many, many times over. And just an amazing, and they're hard to get. You you order one, you better wait six years. Uh, you're going to wait six years to get one custom made. They're incredible. I mean, you can find them on the secondary market, and sometimes uh, places like Knives Ship Free will stock a couple, uh, but they go fast. 
So you had a chance to win uh, Model 1 Randall, or you could win, uh, if you bought a folder, you could win a Sebenza 21 with red linen micarta inlays, which is just gorgeous. Uh, I'm a big sucker for the uh, 21 micarta inlay, or the 21 inlay period, but I love micarta. And with the red, uh, it's a signature thing for knives ship free. You could win that. Or uh, if you bought a chef's knife or a kitchen knife, uh, you were entered in to win a Shun Premier Santoku. Shun is a Kai brand. Kai, the people who bring you uh, Zero Tolerance and uh, Kershaw. Uh, those are our kitchen knives. We got them uh, for our wedding 14 years ago. 13 years ago. <laughs> Tell me to edit out. Don't worry, she's not listening. Your wife. <laughs> okay. Uh, one, we could have a run out of fingers to count them up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't ask me. Please don't ask me. <laughs> It's a long time. I know that. Hey, uh, one nice thing about Knives Ship Free is we do have a affiliate relationship with them. And uh, if you go to our website and uh, uh, then purchase anything from Knives Ship Free, we'll earn, we'll earn a very small commission that'll help us uh, pay the bills and keep the lights on. Uh, if you want to see those knives or a lot of different knives, go to the knifejunkie.com slash knives, the knifejunkie.com slash knives. And also, if you want to uh, subscribe to the Knife Junkie newsletter, if you're not yet subscribed, uh, this past Friday's uh, ep- uh, edition of the uh, the newsletter included all this information about the Knives Ship Free uh, contest and drawing and giveaway of knives and National Knife Day. So uh, another reason to, uh, you know, to find some tidbits of news and that kind of thing going on with the Knife Junkies newsletter that you can find at the knifejunkie.com slash subscribe. All right, Bob, as I am looking at you, your uh, face is a little browner. You've uh, had the week out in the sun down on yeah. the North Carolina coast, had your chance to uh, to get away. I'm surprised you came back. Yeah, so am I. We went to Ocean Isle Beach for a uh, summer vacation one week uh, with some very close friends. We stayed in a beautiful Airbnb. It's a great place. And uh, every single day it rained a little bit. and then. We had a beautiful sunny day. So we went to the beach every day. It was great. And it reminded me a lot of my childhood. We used to go down to Nags Head. Um, we drive down from Ohio in these epic drives and stay there for two weeks. And back in the day, Nags Head was um, sort of undeveloped and uh, felt kind of wild. And you always saw wildlife. And uh, down there in Ocean Isle Beach, it was kind of it had a similar feel, though, uh, you know, lots of homes and stuff like that. But the the beach was incredible. And a uh, couple of days there, we uh, a, a surf fisherman caught a shark, caught a couple, couple of skates, and then uh, I'm in the water with uh, with my good friend Kurt. Actually, he was a guest on this show, Kurt Zapata. We're in the water, and uh, we're playing in the waves with our daughters. Daughters are facing us. We're facing the horizon, and man, thank God we were oriented in the same direction because I wouldn't have believed him, and he wouldn't have believed me, but we both saw a shark breaching the water. And I've never seen that. Uh, It was a good six feet long. It was black on top, white on bottom, bullet shaped. It had a symmetrical tail and it shot out of the waves. And you shot out of the water. And disappeared. (laughs) Yeah. It was about, it was about, you know, as the story is told and retold, (laughs) it's closer and closer, but it's on arm's length away. (laughs) Yeah. Right. It was about, it was about 50 feet away, but big enough to see it was about the size of a man. And uh, Kurt said to me, that wasn't a dolphin, was it? (laughs) And I said, no, that was a shark. We called to our daughters, you know, we got to get out of the water. They're like, no, we don't want to. We're having fun. We just got it. And, and, you know, I said, shark. And I saw a shark and they bolted, man. Right. (laughs) They bolted. It was, it was an amazing thing to see. And I'm I'm still kind of stunned because when I put all of the, the physical characteristics of it together, Seems like, uh, well, it wasn't a black tip, and that's what we saw someone else catch. It was something more in the mackerel shark family. And, uh, well, that's just creepy to know that we were swimming so close to something like that. Right. Um, so there you go. That was my little adventure. And, you know, actually, one thing this reminded me of, Jim, was that it, it reminded me that when I was a, a little kid, I used to say shark knife instead of sharp knife. And uh, my my parents used to always laugh at that shark knife i think i think going down to nags head when i was little and all the pirate stuff and all the pirate swords and the and the sharks and stuff had a big impact 
Well, I know a lot of the interviews you've done on the Knife Junkie podcast uh, have knives that do have shark names or yeah. look like sharks or those kind of things. So after you got over your um, heart racing experience of seeing the shark, getting the girls out of the water, as you're laying back on the beach, did you happen to go, you know, that shark reminded me of the blank knife? <laughs> That looked just like a Greg Lightfoot jumping right. out of the water. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, I was sitting there th like, man, sitting on the beach watching the water, and every little every little wave was a, that, that's a fin. <laughs> Better to be on the sand admiring it than uh, be in the water uh, fearing it or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Amazing thing. All right. So uh, the birthday celebration continues. Uh, the uh, the birthday knife from your parents finally came in. We'll just uh, tease that just for a moment as well as something about a new musical instrument, yes. Bob. I, I don't know what that's got to do with knives, but it's on my show notes here. It has nothing to do with knives. It's <laughs> okay. Part of my uh, my birthday haul, man. I, I just made out this year. My my parents got me a knife I've been bloviating about on, on the podcast, and my dad's a good listener. So... Uh, that came in, but I also, uh, my wife got me an acoustic bass guitar. I used to play bass in bands and, uh, uh, when, you know, in my younger years and before we do an interview or before Thursday night knives, or before we do the show, I always listen to music and pace around and get the room ready. And I'm always, that's oh, true folks. <laughs> I'm always, I have, to, I have to turn my, my, my monitor off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And turn your, your, um, your speakers down. And and I'm I'm air bass playing the whole time. So she bought me the bass, and now I I can uh, I can play again during my uh, pre podcast ritual. Uh, so yeah, I had a great mm. birthday. Uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> it'll, it'll be it'll be. Uh, you don't want to hear the real thing. You want to hear me kind of hack through it, Jim. Hmm. I I don't even know what to say about that, Bob. I'll just oh, <laughs> all right. All right, then I guess we better just move along. What, what, what do your mom say? If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. So <laughs> we'll, uh, go, we'll go from my musical chops to my directing chops. Oh, okay. Good transition. Yeah, well, I'll be directing Thursday Night Knives this week because you're going to be uh, bringing your son to college. Yeah, big, uh, big life event for him. Uh, not only uh, going to college, but uh, it's not like it's, you know, the – the neighborhood college or the community college or the college, you know, in the next town over or even the next state over, he's going up to New England. We live in Vermont, uh, Virginia, and he's going up to New England to college. So uh, they're still going. Uh, the college uh, is a small college, and they've done a lot to, uh, you know, kind of keep everybody safe during the, the COVID uh, coronavirus situation. But uh, once he gets on campus, he can't come home until after Thanksgiving. So it's like, Big step for him, you know, because I know when I went to college, I went home every weekend, you know, especially the first year, you yeah. know, because I was not that far away. And I wanted to get mom to do the laundry. But, uh, <laughs> He'll be mailing that home to you. <laughs> no, he's uh, he's actually learned how to do laundry and everything. So uh, definitely proud of him. But, yeah, big, a big event. So I will miss Thursday Night Knives. I think my my first time ever missing a Thursday Night Knives. But uh, I know you'll do fine. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll have some folks join you. Uh, I know uh, we always have folks join us, but uh, the conversations are always great on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, I won't be directing, but I will see what the hotel Wi-Fi looks like and uh, try to watch. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, you know, we have a lot of uh, loquacious guests, so I won't have to hold things up for too long with, with my own talking. So I'll get, to, I'll get to dabble with all the different camera setups and graphics. It'll be, it'll be awesome. All right. Uh, maybe you could talk for a minute. I'm going to Google loquacious. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. <laughs> All right. A uh, lot of stuff still to come. Uh, of course, some uh, stories and knife life news we want to get to, as well as a lot of a knife talk this week uh, with uh, uh, the birthday knife from Bob, the uh, attention to detail knife that uh, Bob's going to uh, talk a little bit more about breaking in nicely, as well as three knives that he's got from the uh, Pass Around group for review that he's going to talk about all coming up as the Knife Junkie podcast continues. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. 
All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, Knife Life News. We're going to talk about case knives as well as uh, a YouTuber who's got a new knife. So we'll start with uh, Case, Bob, a partnership there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's an unusual looking knife coming out of Case. You know, I know uh, Case gets pigeonholed with their very collectible slip joint folders, uh, but they've been making fixed blade knives for years. Uh, They make the big uh, the big bowies, they make hunting knives, they make uh, all sorts of fixed blades and and other kind of uh, knives uh, outside of just that traditional grandpa pocket knife, so to speak. And, uh, you know, nothing could be truer to that form than the new knife that they just came out with uh, by, it's called the Kyle Lamb Hunter. And it's a collaboration with Winkler Knives, Daniel Winkler. And he uh, worked with uh, knife designer Kyle Lamb. And uh, they came up with this knife that uh, is supposed to be a hunter. But man, to me, it looks like a beautiful, it looks like a great soldier knife. Let me put it that way. It's got this sheep foot blade, uh, but it definitely has a uh, a penetrating point. Uh, it's got a, a saber grind and a big chunky uh, finger choil right up front with a corresponding thumb swell. So you can really get up and power through. Uh, if you need to get behind the blade, to me, this thing is a uh, is a real. It's a real soldier knife. It's a real sort of combat knife uh, coming out of case. But they are calling it a hunter, and well, they should know they're making it. Uh, Kyle Lamb is an interesting guy. He uh, has a company called Viking Tactics, and he recently had three knives OEM produced by Tops Knives uh, under the Viking Tactics. Uh, shingle and they're really interesting cool soldier uh combat inspired uh knives and uh this knife by case the kyle lamb hunter kind of fits with that form it's got a micarta handle it's got this it's got the thick saber grind and it's made from 80 crv which is a particular favorite apparently of uh, winkler and uh it's a very exciting interesting knife to be coming out of case to me because some of their uh, less traditional knives, like some of their uh, more modern folding knives, like the ones they made with Southern Grind, uh, just slightly missed the mark for me. But this one is, uh, I don't know, jumps out to me. What do you think, Jim? Um, you know, I'm looking at it and, uh, you know, a, a, a newbie dumb question. What What makes this knife so special? I mean, it when I look at it, I go... Okay, that's just like a lot of other knives, isn't it? I think that it has to do with the collaboration between the the storied knife maker case and then Kyle Lamb and Daniel Winkler. I think it has to do with the collaboration. It's taking uh, their manufact the manufacturing uh, chops of case and the design uh, and knife making chops of Kyle Lamb and Daniel Winkler and bringing them all together in, into something that, uh, you know, you wouldn't otherwise get. Uh, I, in terms of uh, the actual look of it, to me, the not the look of it, but the utility, it really looks like it could cross over from utility to tactical to, you know, fighting knife if need be, even though it's sort of uh, marketed as a hunter. All right. Multi-purpose, I guess. Well, not multi-purpose, uh, just fits a lot of different markets, if you will. Yeah. Hey, I, I had another knife newbie question, kind of maybe a kind of a learning experience for uh, for other folks that uh, may be uh, noobs that are not uh, junkies like you and a lot of folks that are listening right now. We'll, of course, have the uh, picture to the uh, knife news story in the show notes at thenifejunkie.com slash 141, thenifejunkie.com slash 141. But as you're looking at this picture mm-hmm. and you said finger choil, and I know I've, I've heard that a lot, finger choil. Explain to me again what the finger choil is. Is it the big scoop that has the jimping on it uh, on the blade, or is that the little finger scoop on the handle? Uh, actually, both. I was referring to the big jimped one that you mentioned first, but uh, I have heard people um, get technical and say that uh, finger choil is an incorrect term. A choil is is the sharpening, little notch. Uh, but I guess that's getting a little too 
in the weeds for me. So I, I call that thing a choil. But any sort of cutaway that uh, is there for your finger uh, to lock into so you get better control and uh, oftentimes closer to the blade. And uh, I tend to use the term swale for the, 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 the corollary on top for your thumb. I don't. I never say a thumb. Oh, okay. I always say a, a swale, mm, uh, okay. like a like a gentle hill. I think like a little yeah scoop or yeah okay yeah, yeah. all right all right. Well, what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> like we, it. We'd like to hear from you if you have another uh, term or uh, agree or disagree with uh, Bob's terminology or uh, whatever. We'd love to hear from you. Leave us a comment uh, on the uh, listener line at 724-466-4487. We would love to uh, hear your thoughts again, uh, 724-466-4487. And let me just add that if you you do take the time to call in or write in to correct me in the term of Choil, I would suggest you've got other things to do. (laughs) You've got other things to worry about. That sounds like a challenge there. No, 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 no. I'm just (laughs) I'm just kidding. These are important topics. That's right. That's why we talk about them right here. All right. Another important talk uh, topic we want to talk about, Bob, a YouTube friend of yours, Blade Banter. He's uh, got a new knife, man. Yep. David Cam uh, of Blade Banter, YouTube's uh, knife reviewer, Blade, Blade Banter, who's been reviewing knives for two years, has come out with his own knife company and his first knife. Uh, it's Orion Knives is the name of the company, and the Solaris is the uh, is the debuting design. And it uh, looks like he is fully funded on on uh, Kickstarter, so this thing is happening. I mean, he's 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 more than he's more than on his way. And uh, I got a uh, I got a version of this knife, the Solaris, in the uh, in the mail the other day. Uh, through the pass around group. And I got to say, man, I am terribly impressed. Let me just break it down. So it's, it's designed by a knife enthusiast. So really it has so many things just dialed in ideally for the knife enthusiast. And uh, I would say the most uh, conspicuous design choice here is the button lock, which is a not often used, but but greatly appreciated uh, locking system. People seem to love them. I love them. I haven't had too many of them in my in my day, and uh, most of them have been automatics. But uh, this is a button lock flipper on bearings with a thumb stud, and uh, it's 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 got a drop point blade and a semi neutral handle. And I gotta say, man, he really nailed the design around the pivot. Around the pivot, it's the uh, flipper actuation is perfect. The uh, uh, spidey flicking and thumb stud actuation of this is perfect. Everything is set up geometrically, ideally to the pivot, uh, and makes this an incredibly smooth knife. And uh, um, well, there are other details. I don't want to uh, turn this into a full review, but his Kickstarter, <laughs> get on it. Uh, 14C28N is the blade steel. It's very, very thinly ground, thin behind the edge, high saber grind, high, you know, high flat grind, and, uh, just an excellent, excellent EDC. And, um, uh, but that, that's just from having it for less than 24 hours and just, just noodling with it. I, I haven't right. cut a piece of paper with it yet, but it's very impressive. Well, I'm sure you'll have a uh, video review of that on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at the knifejunkie.com slash YouTube at some point. Yep. And uh, we will uh, reference that uh, David is actually going to be on the Knife Junkie podcast in a couple of weeks. That's right. Uh, We'll have that interview coming up uh, with him. And, of course, we'll uh, uh, show that off as we have uh, started uh, doing those interviews on video as well. So uh, have a lot of opportunity to uh, see a lot of that knife on the, the video episode if you choose to uh, watch it that way. That's right. That's right. And and we're going to get together, David and I, we're going to talk about the entire process of going from a knife fan enthusiast to a reviewer to now, you know, owner of his own company making making a very impressive knife. So it, it should be right. a great interview. Uh, you want to do that interview for solely personal reasons? 
<laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to take a bunch of notes. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, one interesting I, uh, thing I found in the Knife News story was that, as you said, he's been doing knife reviews for a couple of years. This is a, a button lock. And uh, the story said, interestingly, the first knife he reviewed was a button lock folder. So kind of kind of brings it all back home. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm very, very impressed with David's work. Look forward to talking to him. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, we are on episode number 141. Again, show notes, pictures, all kind of good stuff at thenifejunkie.com slash 141. Bob, mom and dad listened. The Bark River Bowie knife was received from the parents as a birthday gift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? It's funny. Uh, I, I am, uh, I'm not a young man, but I feel like a child getting, <laughs> getting a gift like this from my parents. Cause, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's like getting, uh, unwrapping like that ultimate Lego set or, or something. I was just so happy to receive this. Right. Anyway, uh, you know, I've been talking a lot about wanting a Bowie recently. Um, I don't know why I've just wanted a new Bowie. Oh, I do know why, actually, because I saw what was inside the Laredo Bowie, uh, the tang of the Laredo Bowie, which I always considered my my most, uh, I don't know, my most stout and battle worthy. And then I, I wasn't happy with what the tang looked like. And uh, that sent me on a uh, on a on a journey to on find a quest. A, on a quest. And a lot of people responded and many people said bob check out bark river bowies and, oh. I, and i was like yeah yeah but i'm afraid i i won't you know i'll be too gingerly with it so i think i'll look elsewhere and then they were all right everyone who's listening you were right uh bark river came out with their v44 bowie uh they they did an iteration of this a few years back uh, but it's based on the classic marine raider bowie uh which was kind of part weapon part machete uh, for the Pacific theater, uh, you know, uh, during World War II. So it doesn't have the thick quarter inch blade of a traditional Bowie. Uh, it's about half that, uh, but it's big. It's nine inches sharp as all hell because it's a, it's a wide blade. Uh, it's one of those Bowies that, uh, that widens out towards the tip, has a lot of belly. So with a, with a real, uh, high flat grind on a wide blade like that, and then, with uh with bark rivers convex grind i mean this thing slips between atoms jim it's so sharp <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah a beautiful the only thing that would make this knife better is if they sharpened the swedge but that's just my that's my thing i think a bowie should hmm. have a sharpened swedge but like i said it is supposed to be part machete so maybe uh maybe so that you can um if you needed to baton with it, you know, a, a sharpened swedge is a buzzkill if you're batoning something because you, you're just chopping your baton up. Uh, but anyway, uh, the handle, that's what everyone wants to know about with the Bark River, right? Because every model they come out with comes in a multitude of handles from black canvas micarta, which is their base, all the way up to super exotic woods and, uh, and other uh, combinations of materials. And uh, I kind of labored, as you might imagine. Uh, between the beautiful stacked leather handle that Jim, you were commenting on that you like, yeah, love that one, yeah, beautiful, uh, kind of a traditional military look, and then uh, and then they have the Moran style handle, which is what I would is what I ended up getting, which is a contoured um, sort of horse hoof uh, style handle. That's what I call it. I don't know if anyone else calls it a horse hoof, but it has a sort of widening at the end. It's beautiful, contoured, and. Uh, I got the green canvas micarta because I am a sucker for canvas micarta and I have uh, a bush sax uh, or a mini bush sax. I don't know. One of their saxes that they make uh, in green canvas micarta. So this is it almost ends up being a, a complimentary piece. But thanks, mom and dad. I really, really appreciate that gift. Uh, and thanks for listening to the show, by the way. More gift ideas coming later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just stay tuned. That's right. <laughs> yeah. This thing. Um, it's it it totally scratched my Bowie itch. Let me just put it that way. So, all right, beautiful thing. Will this be uh, a knife that you take for your vine cutting adventures in the backyard? I could, but I won't. Okay, I figured as much, <laughs> but I thought I needed to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, but I won't. Is that one of those? Uh, it's like a last stand at the Alamo kind of knife. But they call them uh, safe queens. Yeah, no, I, not not I quite that much. Safe queens here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding lots of safe queens here but 
Uh, I just, you know, no, not this one. All right. All right. Well, let's see what else we can talk about birthday knives. Oh, yeah, you're breaking in the attention to detail uh, knife that you yeah, I, I know. a little more comfortable with. I, I talked a lot about it last week, so I'll keep it brief. But my my A2D Mark I large, which, uh, you know, uh, started out a week ago like a, like a new um, Medford or a new Strider with lock stick and a, and a stiff action in one week. Oh, my God. It's butter and it's not sticking. And uh, the flipping action is awesome. I'm going to do an update on the knife. I'm so, so happy with it. Uh, and so happy that it's, you know, a custom knife and it's a, it's a guy I've had on the show. And uh, yeah, I'm just pleased as punch with this thing. So happy that it's yours. <laughs> so happy that it's mine. And I, I feel like I, uh, sometimes I feel like I might need to change my wardrobe around it. It's so darn classy. Oh, okay. What did this uh, classy knife go with you to the beach or were the, you, did you not want to carry it? It did. It came to the beach with a couple of other knives and then they all stayed in their little zipper pouch because uh, I brought the Spidey Chef to the beach one day and realized, oh yeah, duh, sand. Uh, <laughs> lots and lots of sand. So uh, I, I kept I kept the knife. You know what I, I brought? I brought my little uh, um, Ed Calderon inspired fruit knife in the sheath with me. Okay. Because, you know. Good knife to have. Yep. Yeah. All right, three more knives to talk about, all from the uh, famous uh, Pass Around group that you're going to be doing uh, reviews on, but you want to do a little uh, audio review or a little audio talk about them first. Yeah, yeah, just a little uh, just a little preview. And actually, one of those knives on your list, Jim, was the Orion, the Solaris Orion. So I've already, uh, I've already talked about that. That one uh, I'm going to take a week with and then make a video. Um, but also, I got two other knives in the pass around here and one of them is this midgard's messer uh, a german messer is german for knife and uh it's a midgard's messer viking and uh if you're listening to this show i'm sure you've seen videos on this knife uh online by dirk uh, dirk warning did one a number of people did uh i think a cutlery lover did one uh, on this giant giant frame uh, titanium frame lock folder from germany i mean it, this thing it's got a huge tanto that i'm sure could split logs it's just huge and the handle uh you know i would need six fingers to fill up this handle <laughs> and that would be really gross uh but so i'm going to be talking about this uh, you know without without seeing it it doesn't mean much but let me just say it is the most uh, deliciously ridiculous extrapolation of the form let me just put it that way very cool. Uh, well, then, uh, well, let me interrupt you. I'm sorry. Uh, you'll, of course, give me pictures of this knife as well as the Orion and the next one that you're going to yeah, talk yeah. about, as well as maybe your birthday uh, knife that you got from mom and dad. We'll have a bunch of pictures this week. So uh, we'll try to have pictures in the show notes again at the knifejunkie.com slash 141, the knifejunkie.com slash 141. That way, as you're listening to the podcast, you can go over to the web page and kind of look at some of these things Bob's talking about. That's my weekly on-air reminder. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I will definitely uh, send pictures of all these ridiculous knives. The last ridiculous knife is uh, pretty cool, and it's been out for a, quite a while, at least seven years, I'll say. Uh, but I've always been interested uh, in it. And we were talking about North Carolina before, Jim. This is a company in North Carolina in Asheville called Asheville Steel. It's a family-owned company, and they make... Uh, a very very interesting style knife called the Paragon. Uh, they make a they make some out the fronts, they make some out the side automatics. But this Paragon, to me, is the most interesting uh, offering by them, and I got it through uh, the Pass Around Group. Now, it's a fully encapsulated blade that is released when you press two buttons, one on either side, right at the pivot. The body opens up, and the blade swings out and uh once you get the hang of it it's a it's a it's a fidgeter's uh daydream i, I haven't gotten the hang of it yet but uh it's a very very interesting knife uh so i'm going to be doing a review on this too i've always been curious about this and uh i love the fact that this style where the blade is completely encapsulated inside the handle uh, allows for double edge all sorts of double edge configurations that you uh can't get on a regular folder so it's pretty hmm. cool okay 
So that'll be interesting. I never wasn't familiar with them from my home state of North Carolina. Yeah. Cool. Up in the mountains. Anything else you want to talk about knives, or is that enough? Knife talk for this Jim, I, I think that's it. I think that's it. After after a week of laying fallow, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's such an emotional roller coaster over here, you know? Well, again, remind you that uh, if you're listening to this uh, uh, on Tuesday, means you're one of our uh, Knife Junkie patrons. That means you get uh, early access to the podcast on Tuesday before it releases to the public on Wednesday. Uh, if you want to have that same privilege as well as others, just go to thenifejunkie.com slash, slash Patreon, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. If you're listening uh, when it drops uh, regularly, publicly, uh, on Wednesday, Thursday Night Knives is coming up tomorrow. We touched about it earlier. Uh, Bob's uh, directorial debut on Thursday Night Knives. Uh, hopefully you can join him on the show and uh, talk knives, show off a bunch of knives. That's at 10 p.m. Eastern on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel and Facebook page at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube or thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. So, Bob, as we uh, wrap it up this week, I do want to also remind folks that uh, this coming Sunday on the interview show, it's going to be uh, Skiff Squared or whatever, whatever the phrase <laughs> is. Steve and Steve Skiff of Skiff Made Blades is coming up this Sunday on the interview show. That's right. I'm looking forward to that there. Uh, They've really taken the uh, folding knife market by storm, especially custom collectors. Man, uh, people are in love with their work, and I can see why. Never personally handled one, but uh, hopefully that changes post-haste. All right. That's coming up this Sunday again tomorrow night, uh, Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern on the Knife Junkies YouTube and Facebook pages. Uh, so just... Uh, Lots of opportunities to catch up on Knife Talk here with the Knife Junkie. So for Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm the Knife Newbie over here, Jim Person, thanking you so much for joining us on episode number 141 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.